I'm Sheriff Rick Bradshaw. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Behind the Star. Thanks, Sheriff Bradshaw. Did you know the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office has an important piece of equipment that can help them find a missing person? Here's more on the technology that is available to every PBSO unit. Missing persons reports are filed often with the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. Many of these incidents will solve themselves within hours. But there are some reports that need immediate action by our PBSO units. These incidents may involve an autistic child, a special needs person or even a family member that has wandered away due to dementia or Alzheimer's. When these incidents that require immediate action are reported, PBSO will dispatch different units due to weather, terrain, location, and other search criteria. One piece of technology that every PBSO unit has access to is the person tracking device. Deputy Sheriff Ledford explains more about this technology being used at the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. This is the actual device that does the tracking for a wandering juvenile all the way up to an Alzheimer's victim. And what this device does, it has a unique characteristic where I can dial in frequencies. The frequencies are unique to every person that has a transmitter. These transmitters can be worn around the neck, wrist, and even the ankle. The location placement of this life-saving technology will depend on the person wearing these small tracking devices. The person tracking device that locates these personal transmitters is simple to operate and quick and easy to deploy in emergency situations. You can see this is actually a single-handed unit that I can deploy and still maintain officer safety at the same time. These pieces of equipment are able to be used in our vehicles and our helicopters. We've uh, used them on ATVs. We've used them on our mounted units. So we can deploy these units just about anywhere we have to. One of the best reasons for using this personal tracking device is its simplicity in use. So no matter where you have the device, this is run through a radio frequency, not GPS. We've found consistently that the RF technology is always superior to GPS. This device works in bad weather. It will find people in steel buildings, concrete structures, it doesn't matter. This piece of technology provides confidence to our teams in the field. Just being able to turn the equipment on and locate that chirp that we're hearing right now is everything. This tracking device is a useful and reliable tool for our units conducting the missing person investigation. Having this piece of equipment makes it so much faster and a, and a much better start. So even if we get the equipment started and we're working something, we can still deploy all of the other assets of the agency to bring it full there to make a recovery and a rescue. We could be tracking into a wood line, up to a water, any area that you can think of terrain-wise, we can track people. It's not solely dedicated for autistic children. Again, seniors, they might have Alzheimer's, they might have dementia. This applies to that broad spe spectrum that these uh, people might have. The PBSO has shown that this device reduces the amount of time it takes to find a missing person. We have 27 of these units. 20 are in our districts throughout the county of Palm Beach. We have seven more that are mobile at all times, meaning that a road patrol deputy can deploy once the call is received. Dispatch receives the call, they verify the unique frequency that we spoke of earlier. Road patrol deputies, they triangulate with the use of our canine SAR dogs, search and rescue dogs, our drone unit, and our aviation unit. Once those uh, combined forces get together, we can actually triangulate to the point where we can walk up and locate the person by hand. I've seen a vast, vast reduction um, in the amount of time it takes to recover our at-risk people. So whether it's an autistic child or an Alzheimer's sufferer that's gone missing, this piece of equipment absolutely makes a difference for us. Sheriff Rick Bradshaw recently spoke to the media about illegal immigration. Here are some of the sheriff's comments concerning the Mexican border and the challenges we face in Florida. I'm just here to deliver a message. And the message is, don't think for a minute that what happens at the Mexican border doesn't affect us here. Here you have three illegals that should have never been in this country that have committed a very serious crime, kidnapping and sexual battery of a lady. They shouldn't be here. This is the same thing that we saw where the student was killed. 
by the person that was here illegally. That's why we pay so much attention. Folks, our border is the ocean. There's no fence there. We are the fence. That's why we spend as much time as we do and dedicate resources to stopping people before they get here. In all likelihood, these three people came through Mexico. They didn't come through here. I can tell you that for sure. We would have checked in our database. But for them to be in this country, to be able to commit these type of crimes is unconscionable. The federal government has put the American people in jeopardy. Our intelligence section, who works very closely with the FBI, has also identified that the most dangerous gangs in the world are now in Miami from Venezuela. They make MS-13 look like school kids. They're not gonna stay just in Miami. They're gonna go where they need to go to do what they do. They don't know if it's Dade, Broward, Palm Beach County. They just go to do what they're gonna do and we're gonna to have to deal with them. Palm Beach County Commissioner Mac Bernard honors our Corrections Division with a proclamation for National Correctional Officer and Employee Week. We appreciate the recognition for the team's dedication and service to Palm Beach County. Being a canine handler is a 24-7 commitment. Our canine handlers dedicate countless hours to caring for and training with their partners. Recently, our canine unit received a special surprise, a life-size bronze statue of a working patrol dog. The statue was generously provided by Suzanne and Ambassador Robert W. Johnson IV through the Sheriff's Foundation. We're grateful for their support and proud of our dedicated canine team. Are you ready to be calm in the storm? We're looking for dedicated individuals to join our team as 911 communication dispatchers. PBSO DUI investigator Keith White was honored by the Florida Department of Transportation at a Florida Panthers game. He received a custom jersey and recognition on the Jumbotron for the 1,000-plus DUI arrests in his career. 30 homicide detectives from the police services of Trinidad and Tobago are being trained by our detectives from PBSO virtually. The training is part of the long-standing relationship between our two agencies. We extend our heartfelt thanks to the Flagler Museum for warmly welcoming our PBSO mentoring youth. It was an unforgettable experience for the kids from Belle Glade, allowing them to learn about the rich history of Palm Beach County. A big thanks to the Cub Scouts for stopping by our headquarters. It was a pleasure to have such an enthusiastic group eager to learn about law enforcement. Sheriff Rick Bradshaw made a surprise appearance to share an empowering message with the Scouts. PBSO has produced a documentary on the case involving Rachel Hurley, who was 14 years old when she was brutally killed 34 years ago. Here's a preview.
Jupiter, Florida, the northernmost town in Palm Beach County, considered one of the best beach towns in America. But there's a terrible, gloomy past in this suburban little corner of Florida, one that haunts those who live there 30 years ago. St. Patrick's Day, March 17, 1990. It was a Saturday like any other, where families and friends gathered around the sandy beaches of Du Bois Park. Off towards the inlet was a group of energetic teenagers on a 12-foot Boston whaler, three girls, two boys. Rachel Hurley, a 14-year-old middle school full of life, was one of the girls on that boat that day. Rachel left Jupiter Inlet to meet her mother as planned at Carlin Park just under a mile away, but she did not make it. Her life was taken just before she turned 15. We are heartbroken over the passing of retired corrections employee Sharon Leonard. Sharon dedicated over two decades of her life to PBSO. We extend our deepest condolences to Sharon's family, friends, and colleagues. We honor the memory of Sergeant Jose Diaz Ayala, who passed away four years ago after contracting COVID-19 while on duty. We honor his service. We also honor the memory of our fallen hero, Deputy Sheriff Donald L. Chavolt, who made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty in 2022. His dedication to serve and protect will forever inspire us. Our deepest condolences to the New York Police Department for the tragic loss of police officer Jonathan Diller. This hero was shot and killed while investigating a vehicle, leaving behind his wife and a little boy. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family, loved ones, and everyone at the NYPD during this difficult time. We honor the memory of Deputy Sheriff Anita Pospisil, who made the ultimate sacrifice back in 1992 while patrolling the streets of Palm Beach County. She was killed when a truck ran a red light at an intersection. Her dedication to serving and protecting the public will forever inspire us. We honor the memory of Deputy Sheriff James S. Fogelman, who made the ultimate sacrifice while serving citizens of Palm Beach County. We renew our commitment to uphold his legacy and honor his sacrifice. We also honor the memory of Deputy Sheriff Kevin Douglas Matthews of the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. Deputy Matthews tragically lost his life in the line of duty in 1992 at the age of 35 when his police motorcycle was struck by a vehicle as he was conducting an escort for a presidential candidate's motorcade. We offer our deepest gratitude and respect. So today we're here to talk about securing your home while you're gone on vacation or out of town so that it is not a opportune target for burglars and thieves. Well, if you're going to leave on a vacation, you're going to be out of town for any length of time, you want to make sure that you make your home look like you are still there. Some of the ways that you can do that are to make sure that when you're gone, someone continues to cut your grass, keep the house outside look like someone's still there. Part of that would also be if you get newspaper delivery to either stop the delivery or have your neighbors or someone pick up the newspaper uh, and bring it in or put it out of sight so that people driving by couldn't tell that there was an accumulation of uh, newspapers in the driveway. Along those lines also goes with your mail, either have your mail delivery stopped or have uh, neighbors pick up your mail get the automatic timers for your lights which will turn your lights on and off at, at night while you are away so that it looks like there's activity in the home one of the other things that you do especially in this day and age with the prevalence of social media is you don't want to post on social media uh, that you're going on vacation because sadly to say sometimes burglars aren't going to be people that you don't know they could actually be someone on your friends list 
have secure door locks on your home. And if you have an alarm, uh, make sure you set your alarm and, and have that monitored. I think most alarm companies, you can call them and let them know that you're gonna be on vacation. So if the alarm is activated, that they know you're not there. Some of the other things that you can do are video uh, surveillance uh, cameras. Make sure everything in your house that's of value is secure. When you're out of town, have your neighbors look out for your home. The bottom line is, is you just wanna make it as hard as you possibly can for the burglar to a, get in your house, and then B, if they do get in your house, to get your stuff and, and steal it. PBSO wants to make sure that when you leave on vacation and you uh, come back, that your house is just the way it was when you left it. Welcome back to Behind the Star. Congratulations to our Corrections Department for being a part of the Career and College Day at Glade Central High School. It's inspiring to see corrections making a difference and being recognized for their contributions in our community. Way to go, team. We are grateful for this commendation given to PBSO from a family member of a man who died tragically after years of battling addiction. In this letter, the man calls Detective Lee our angel, and they appreciate Deputy Lee's work to help the family get through a difficult time. PBSO recently celebrated Women's History Month. It's a chance to salute some remarkable individuals for their invaluable contributions to our agency, including Deputy Megan Foster. Hi, I'm Megan Foster. I'm in the aviation unit. I've been here for 12 years and in the unit for nine. The process it took me to get here, uh, several years of flight training. I applied, got into the academy was hired, I uh, did some time on the road, and uh, with my helicopter commercial pilot's license, I was able to get over into the unit. I am the second female pilot. There was one previously uh, here before I was in the unit. She retired, and I'm the only one with uh, 15 other men. In the morning, maintenance lets us know which aircraft they're gonna be working on, which one's gonna be the duty aircraft and the backup aircraft. Then the pilot in command will pre-flight the aircraft. We get the ladder out, we climb all around it, look at everything. Then um, the TFO, he does his, his side where he pre-flights and does the camera and makes sure that the communications are all working. After the helicopter's been pre-flighted, we then take it out and we give it a nice bath. We uh, wash, some days we wax. We dry it and uh, then it gets put back in the hangar until either we get a call or we go up on a patrol flight. If uh, they need us up in the air, we pull the tractor with the dolly. We pull that out onto the taxiway and we take off from the dolly and head to wherever call that they need us for, mainly uh, burglaries, robberies, uh, missing persons boat off of the shore that needs help. We get a, a variation of calls. As a female aviator, there are not many of us that are helicopter pilots. It's a very small group of us, so to say a message to my daughter, who is almost two, I just want females to know everywhere that you can do anything you put your mind to. And let's shine the spotlight on an inspiring trendsetter in our agency, Deputy Floor Angel Cardenas. She's the second woman ever to join the motor unit at the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office and currently the only woman serving in this role. Deputy Cardenas embodies dedication, skill, and the spirit of breaking barriers. I've been with PBSO approximately three and a half years. Um, right now I'm in the motor unit, as you can see, yeah, which is a traffic unit. I just like to service the community, you know, just I'll call for help and that's, that's just me. We also want to spotlight the exceptional female correction staff who exemplify hard work, dedication and skill. These women stand as beacons of resilience and professionalism.
We want to give some attention to PBSO Communication Division Manager Natalie Hennix, a remarkable leader with nearly three decades of dedicated service. Under her leadership, the team successfully returned to headquarters, transitioning into a state-of-the-art 911 call center after being spread across the county since 2021. Great job. And we celebrate the contributions of Deputy Baker and Deputy Lamb from our District 8 community policing team. These two outstanding women have consistently gone above and beyond their call of duty. Their tireless efforts have not only elevated the effectiveness of our community policing initiatives, but have also set a shining example for others to follow. As we honor the groundbreaking women in our PBSO history, we highlight Deputy Liz Klein, who was the first sworn woman deputy in Palm Beach County, launching her law enforcement career as a dispatcher in 1963. And we share the story of Deputy Audrey Miranda, the only woman deputy in our mounted unit. My name is Audrey Miranda. I'm a deputy with the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office Mounted Unit. I've been with the Sheriff's Office for 20 years and in the Mounted Unit for seven. I started out in 2003 as a school crossing guard. In 2009, I went through the Dual Academy and worked my way through the Corrections Division up to Sergeant. I joined the Mountain Unit because as a child, I've always had the love and passion for horses. So this was my dream job, working with, with the horses. For me, working with the horses, it's actually not even work. Because um, if you're doing something that you love, it's not work. Um, I am currently the only female deputy in the mounted unit, although there has been many female deputies in the past. Um, we do have a strong female support team uh, that helps us with our daily activities, horse care, and our training. In the mounted unit, we take care of the horses and we patrol in numerous neighborhoods, shopping centers, parks within Palm Beach County on horseback. We also do numerous special events and we assist in search and rescue of missing people. This is my horse, Z. She's a 15-year-old Dutch warm blood retired show jumper. She was donated to us last year through the Sheriff's Office Foundation. She has proven to be a strong leader and a great partner. To all the women out there, young and old, I'd like to say with a lot of hard work and dedication, anything is possible. And now, some news and notes from around the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. PBSO recently hosted the Florida Sheriff's Explorers Association's 2024 event. This gathering brought together Explorer cadets from across Florida, all aspiring to pursue careers in law enforcement. Over 135 attendees from nine counties participated in a weekend filled with training scenarios, team-building exercises, and firearm safety sessions. We want to thank the staff and students at Glade Central High School for including us in their Criminal Justice Competition Day. We had staff from different corrections units in attendance providing insights into the world of law enforcement. We hope our visit inspired them to explore a future in corrections. And PBSO participated in Career Day at Coral Reef Elementary School. Our different PBSO units were there to leave a lasting impression on the young minds. We love inspiring the next generation of heroes. We want to recognize our Deputy of the Month, Deputy Carranza. With dedication and compassion, he locates homeless camps, coordinates cleanups, and provides resources to those in need, enhancing community safety and presence. We thank him for his hard work and professionalism. We congratulate Tina Ariola, who has dedicated 40 years of service as our contracts manager. Tina's dedication to excellence has been a cornerstone of our success as an agency. At our recent PBSO Tri-Monthly Awards, a remarkable 10-year-old girl stole our hearts. 
With a heart as big as her dreams, she shared with us that she wants to help the homeless in our community. In a commitment to nurture her journey of making a difference, we're happy to announce that we will be funding her tuition for the police academy whenever she's ready. Congratulations to the Palm Beach County Behavioral Health Coalition on their impactful 14th Annual School Bus Drug Prevention Awards Ceremony. PBSO was a proud sponsor of the event. Congratulations to Jeff Hawthorne on a decade of exceptional service. As our Division Manager for Fleet Management, Jeff has been the driving force behind keeping all PBSO patrol and unmarked cars running smoothly. Great job. A big thanks to our visitors, Mason and Amelia, for making the trip all the way from Toronto to say hi to our deputies in Lake Worth Beach. It's wonderful to know we have fans outside our country. A huge shout out to Stromboli's Pizza Kitchen of West Boca for their incredible act of kindness. They stopped by District 7 to deliver several delicious pizza pies, showing their appreciation for our deputies. It's gestures like these that warm our hearts and fuel our dedication to serve. Thank you to everyone who attended the Business Development Board Quarterly Breakfast at the West Palm Beach Hilton Convention Center. Sheriff Bradshaw addressed the impact of migration and immigration on crime in Palm Beach County. The volunteers from the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office were recently at the Village of Royal Palm Beach Green Market. They were there telling residents how they can volunteer and make a difference in our community. We continue to be inspired by the residents of Palm Beach County helping others. At a food distribution event, three incredible Haitian women faced daunting transportation challenges. With grace and strength, they carried their food boxes on their heads, a testament to their resilience. We're celebrating 35 years of dedicated service as Deputy Kenny Lowe is entering retirement. He spent the majority of his career serving the community of Loxahatchee. Join us in thanking him for his honorable commitment and to wish him a wonderful retirement. Thank you to the generous members of the Bay Winds Shepherds Guild for making a special visit to our Royal Palm Beach station and bringing new, individually wrapped stuffed animals. These trauma bears are set to be a comforting companion to children in distressing situations. Deputy Michael Mahoney wants to remind everyone that our online police report system allows you to submit a report immediately and obtain an unofficial copy of the police report for your records. To file a police report online, visit our website. And we want to wish a very special birthday to our incredible volunteer, Wilma Willemed, who just turned 96. Thank you for your commitment to Palm Beach County. Now, back to you, Sheriff Bradshaw. Okay, that'll do it for this episode of Behind the Star. On behalf of the men and women of the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office, thank you for watching.